Hello, microphone preamplifiers in line types. It's something you may not need if you only use high output microphones or if you use a dynamic microphone for uh, such as live vocals very close up. But if you want to use a dynamic mic at a distance or um, a low output microphone that's not high enough level to work properly with whatever interface or input you're using, an inline amplifier can be very useful. Um, they can also be ludicrously expensive, like a lot of uh, uh, audio equipment. But there's no reason for that that I can see. At least for a straightforward one for general vocal work, such as uh, uh, YouTube stuff like this. Now, I have on my desk stand on the shelf behind me, if I can just move these into view without wrecking anything. I've got the SM58 piggybacked on the stand with SM7B. You can see somewhere in there if it's a... Yeah. Um, that's two different dynamic mics. I've got them positioned, we've put the stand back where it was, at about 16 inches away and um, it both aiming straight at me where I'm sitting here. Uh, I've got them both connected to a little focus right interface. Which, um, hopefully you can see that, I've put it in the right place, you can see the controls, you can see the level setting. I've got both levels full up and uh, as you can see from the uh, Audacity level meters, the peak in it's about minus 18 for the SM, sorry, for the SM58 and about minus 24 for the SM7B, there's about 6 dB difference. And that's with, as I say, both levels set full up. If I, or I'll just swap the channel just to make sure, or just to show that there's no difference in the input, so I'll see if there is. In fact, I'm not, I don't think I've tried this specifically, or not recently. So now that's SM7B on the right channel, and there's still about 6 dBs difference. And I'm talking quite loudly. So I'll put it back as it was. So I'll try and remember which is which. Okay, so the levels on those are not very high. This is the circuit I came up with to be able to use such things at a distance, or a greater distance. It's an adaption, if you've seen my other microphone stuff, and the circuits in there, it's an adaption of the original output circuit I created for use with a, a separate three-terminal electric capsule, you know, literally decades ago, before I knew anything about the uh, Shope circuit or anything like that. The, the difference from that is this doesn't have the Zener between the output stage ground and the true ground. It's just all directly connected together and the bias is appropriately readjusted to allow for the different voltages. But it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. That's a that's a prototype on a bit of our board. Or a bit of not our board, sorry, a bit of uh, matrix board, square pad with ground plane. It could easily be a bistrip board of our board. Uh, it's not all that complex. You can see that's uh, represented that way around. Uh, so it has the, uh, just come into focus, if it will. Right, so these are the input load resistors, 4.7k from each input to ground. Coupling capacitors, 10 microfarads to the bases of the two transistors. And the bias network is 100k from the base to ground, 470k from base to collector. And then just a low value series output resistor, just for a bit of uh, filtering. You could have a choke in that position if you wanted, better RF filtering. And you could also put um, small, you know, say 47 peak for 100 peak for something like that, capacitors between the pins and ground on each socket if you had a problem with RF interference or anything like that. So, uh, yes, the main mod from the original circuit which had completely separate emitter resistors, as this now has a 
a preset across linking them, which is on the back of this board. 1K preset. And as the re resistance is decreased on that, the gain increases. It's changing it from two isolated uh, low gain amplifiers with the gain set by the ratio of the emitter resistor to the load resistor in the interface or whatever it's connected to the mixing desk, anything it's connected to, uh, to a long tail pair configuration with emitters joined, which gives very high gain or much, much higher than uh, the basic configuration anyway. So, as I say, that's it. You can see it's not that complex. And I'll show the effects if it's plugged in. Just find a screwdriver as well to adjust the gain. Right, I'll turn the gain to minimum to start with. That is what it's set for. And I'll put it in line with the SM7, because that's the lower output one. Just bring that into view again. Oh, let me turn that gain right down to start with and see what setting is needed to get it back to the similar level. Just making sure that the gain pots are visible. Lighting's not very good, sorry about that. But you can see that you can see the, the gain pot on that one. That one's untouched or full. So I'll bring that up again and uh, see the effect with a minimum gain. So it was much lower than the uh, SM58. And now it's, uh, what, 9 dBs higher, looking at that roughly. And that's at minimum gain, so that's brought it up by about 15 dB. If I adjust the preset slightly, I should be able to get it a lot higher if wanted. I mean, that's coming up gradually. It's not a linear effect, the, the gain comes up sharper at the end, but that's coming up now to peaking at near a minus 6. In fact, that's it, it's, it's just pushing it just beyond minus 6 now. But that more or less mid, mid position. So relative to the SM58, that's about um, 18 dBs of gain, I would say at that. Um, that's still got the input gain turned full upon that. I'll turn that well down so I don't overload things and it go crazy. Then turn this full up. Right, that's now all the way up, maximum gain. And if I bring this back up, um, so that's now about equal to the SM58 at half gain on this interface because it popped. And if I turn it full up, I'll have to back off a bit because it's going to overload like crazy. So I'm just backed into a door. I'm now talking very quietly, I'm trying to, from, I don't know, eight foot away. You can see the level of the background noise on if I keep quiet. It's something like 40 dB gain of that I'd estimate. I've got to turn that back down so it's going to, it's going to, it's going to overload and sound terrible. Uh, but um, you can see that gain comes up quite nicely at that. Uh, with it turned to full gain and the, a reasonable set is on here rather than going crazy with it. You can get a decent level out of it and uh, Hopefully it still sounds reasonable. Obviously I'll put sample files on so you can compare for yourself. But uh, as you can see, that's a, a simple circuit that's very effective. I mean, I make no claims to quality on anything <laughs> on audio quality because I don't have the, ge the gear to test it. But on the initial tests I've done listening to recordings myself, it sounds reasonable. It's uh, for vocal work, I think it's quite fine. Anyway, I'll leave, it, leave you to be the judge of that. Now, the other circuit, um, which is for a different application, this is for, in fact, I'm just uh, unplug this so I don't short anything out or mess it up. I'll put that on one side for a minute. I don't have a demo of this. Um, yep, wrong, wrong circuit, that's uh, an earlier revision of the, this one before I got the BIOS off there. Okay, this one. This is, you can see it's an ultra simple thing, it's seven or eight components, depending if you add that extra little capacitor there, the point one. And that is an inline self-powered preamp for a electric capsule on to, into a PC or similar microphone input. Um, 
And that was a kind of a, a challenge project for, uh, I did for someone on one of the forums that didn't think it was possible. But I've been meaning to do one myself for ages, actually, because uh, I've got a couple of mics that are really, really low output, not suitable for any serious use, whether plugged into a PC or anything like that. They were kind of eBay ultra cheap things, like 99p ones. But I was just curious if it would be possible, so I was thinking of doing this anyway. And it does work. Depending on the microphone capsule you try it with, you might have to change the bias resistor, that 220k, or you might have to change the fit the power feed resistor slightly, because it's relying on power coming from the PC end, which on a classic PC microphone input, that has a, a 470 ohm to 5 volts in the computer end or the sound card. Uh, and that's that then would normally be connected directly to the electric microphone, a two-terminal mic. And a lot of the older PC mics are literally just a capsule in a casing with a wire on them. And that's that's all you need for a lot of uh, work with a PC. Uh, and they can be quite good quality. There's no, I'm not, there's no criticism at all of the quality. It's just the level on some is a little bit low. Again, if you try to use them as a distance. And, uh, you know, from the people that's built this on the forum, uh, it, it works. I mean, I've tried it myself. I only built it on a bit of uh, prototype, plug-in prototype board just to prove it. And I don't know what I did with the cables or anything, so I can't rebuild it. As a, I'm a bit short of jack plugs. <laughs> I've got loads of mono ones, but no stereo for some reason. But very simple circuit. Rather than the, uh, the 470 ohm load connecting to the microphone, the 470, the, you know, the load in the computer, it's now working through that transistor. The power is filtered through a 4K7 there and a 47 microphone capacitor to smooth out the audio so it's just back to DC again because otherwise you'd be getting negative feedback between the collector and the bass and uh, kill the gain of the transistor. And then from that another load resistor so you're not uh, shorting out the audio from the microphone onto that capacitor. And a couple of capacitor there, which I've shown this is 47, but I mean 10 mark could be adequate as well. Anything like that is not critical. That couples the audio from the capsule to the base of the transistor. And uh, the resistor there sets the bias lobs to try and keep this. Uh, it's a balance between keeping the collector voltage high enough to get a sensible voltage through to the capsule and low enough so that it doesn't uh, distort too much on peaks. Because if it's, if it's too high, there won't be enough pulp value in the load and it'll start to get asymmetric when it should be symmetrical on, uh, you know, if you know what I mean, on, on waveforms, it'll distort. It won't rise as fast as it should. Again, sorry, I can't demonstrate it, but with appropriate values and an appropriate microphone capsule, it does work well. I don't know the exact gain, but it's definitely worthwhile. It's about slight switching them the uh, microphone boost on, on the older sound cards that used to have a boost, all the uh, audio inputs on PCs when they had a boost, which not all of them do now. So again, it's just another option. You see, it's very simple. I don't know if you need that resistor. I didn't have that in the original prototype, but adding that in should make it a little bit more linear without drastically affecting the gain. Uh, you can leave that linked out or put a lower value in, you know, 10 ohms, 47 ohms, just to experiment with it. I mean, it will very much depend on the computer you connect it to, how how that input is configured, and on the electric mic you connect it to. Don't bother trying it with anything like the uh, uh, so-called condenser mics that have got uh, three and a half mil plugged out, because they, if they've got anything other than a direct electric capsule connection inside the microphone, it's going to be just um, way too high a feed resistance to to do anything at all with it. I mean, not that it'll work with a, a direct mic connection to the PC anyway. Okay, anyway, I'm, uh, I'm awfully, but yeah, that's uh, that's another option. It's something to play with and experiment with. And uh, I think you should find it works okay, as long as you get the bias values right and uh, a suitable mic. Okay, so I say that's the main one. Uh, we'll go back to that. Uh, now, if this works right, as I'm hoping it does, I've done a surface mount version of this, which should fit inside one of these casings. I'm hoping. I want to get a prototype. Um, 
These are actually attenuators that you can buy quite cheaply. That one I've not taken apart yet. Um, the commercial attenuator you can buy quite cheaply. Uh, it's about the same cost as a good quality plug and socket, in fact. Um, and they come apart, unfortunately, they come apart opposite ends, so the PCB can connect direct to a, a plug up the plug or the socket, but then you need three wires to link it back to the connector at the other end and then just pack them back in as you reassemble it. As I say, I've not got the prototype yet, so I don't know for sure that's going to work. But if it does, that's uh, a nice thing you could use um, because the the actual circuit boards are going to be quite cheap, and a lot, a lot cheaper than some of the uh, commercial ones you, you you can get online that are in the kind of hundred pound range, something like that. Uh, silly prices. Though again, they might be much higher quality than this. I don't know. I don't know if this is high quality or low quality. That's something again uh, you have to de decide for yourself. But it's certainly not going to be high price. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. And if any comments or queries, please put them in the uh, comments below and please subscribe and like if you like seeing stuff like this all right thank you